All right, what up, folks? So we're back at it again with another video. All right, we got a 2016 Kia Sportage um, petrol vehicle. It's real clean inside. Customer complaint is that the vehicle isn't starting. Right now, um, he took it to, let's see if we could get this back a little bit. He took it to various shops. I believe they replaced the crankshaft um, sensor, the cam also, and the spark plugs, right? And he still isn't starting, right? So let's see if we can crank this vehicle over and see exactly what the customer is ex experiencing. So I got the key here, All right? So that's first thing I like to check is to listen to the um, cadence of the engine to see if it's lacking compression. Uh, and let's see what happens. Okay, you see the tap moving, and you hear the sound like it's low on compression, to be honest. All right, so I'm gonna put the scan tool on this vehicle and see if I like getting codes or anything like that, and take it from there. Or we could just do a basically a compression test. All right, so let's hook up the scan tool and scan for any kind of codes to kind of give us some guidance. Oh, so as I said, man, it sounds like it's lacking something right key is on uh, it says like 68,000 69,000 kilometers on the dash All right um wait, let's set this up this is a what else i'm gonna do here all right so let's bank one that. fuel trim correction good we gotta take this off arrow sensor reading good all right take this off let's scan for any codes Right and see exactly if we have anything that could help us. Right, so we have no codes, right? Um, well, I'm at it. Let me use the sharpshooter and do a compression test. Right. Um, let's see. We gotta enter all my cylinders. This half it has four cylinders. Right. So let's do a relative compression test. Right, I'm not gonna disable anything because you actually hear like the compression is really low so um believe i can't do no harm to this engine you know so let's see if we could get it done All right no so we can't get it done because the battery is too low so um yeah cancel this test i'm gonna put the jump pack on the the vehicle and see if we could do this over this test Two hours later. All right, so I had to charge this battery up so I can continue with diagnosing this vehicle. Um, we could keep it simple, but I would like to use this case study to show you guys how easy it is to narrow down what's wrong with this vehicle. Um, with this test, I can check the compression of the vehicle within two minutes of setup. Um, remember that the fuel has to be disabled to avoid cylinder wash. That could definitely throw your readings off. And from the looks of it, this vehicle definitely lacking compression, right, in a few cylinders. I'm not sure where the pressure is going or where it's at and which cylinder um, has a low compression, but let's go in the hood and see what we can figure out. Yeah, this customer stated that the vehicle had been down for a few weeks and the last mechanic told him that it wasn't getting any spark. So that's why they changed the cam and the crank sensor and also the spark plug, right? Um, so let's see if we get any spark. I got my spark tester. I'm gonna hook it up to number one cylinder and see. Let's see what's happening. Okay, so we don't have any spark, right? Um, let me see. Is it my tester that's having trouble? Um, let's try this again and see exactly if we get any spark. Okay, guys, I'm hearing spark firing, but it's not like it has a delay, right? So let's do a manual compression test in all the cylinders, right? Yes, I could bring out the big boys and basically scope the whole vehicle right but i want to do a regular compression test so i can show you exactly how a compression test doesn't really um, help you in this um situation right but it doesn't really also paint the bigger picture that i'm looking for right so i'm not knocking these old school methods it, it, i still have these things these are my tools right but i just use that to verify right and this is just letting me know that the cylinder has the ability to seal or not or if i'm getting sparked that's it it's not letting me know that if my ignition timing is off or my um uh, basically where the compression is leaking off to so when i'm going down in the engine i'll figure out you know where i'm gonna attack so from the looks of it we got two dead holes and we got low compression in the first two cylinders right um this is just to help out you know guys who want to get into scoping i get calls a lot or even emails or text from guys who want to get into this thing and don't know where to start right and i hope in this help right 
Um, also, look at the plugs, man. The plugs is basically burnt out. This is the plugs that was in his engine, and based, I mean, the customer was driving with, um, you know, misfires all this time, and was probably taking it on. That could have led to a lot of things too, where I'm not sure exactly what's going on. But these are the plugs that they replaced. These are the original plugs they put on, and the crankshaft sensors, and the cam, and all that good stuff. And I don't care how much parts you throw at this vehicle, it's not gonna fix it. Right? I mean, you could have heard that from just the beginning of my video, how that was sounding, right? So we're going to pour a little cap full of oil, see if, if it rings, if we're going to, um, you know, bring it up. But nope, nothing. It's not even moving, right? So this engine definitely got to be torn apart to figure out what's going on. Matter of fact, let me do a little bit more digging, and which you know I, I'm about, right? I got my pulse sensor in the exhaust, and I've got one in the intake. And I'm going to do a relative compression test and also I'm going to go insulin. I don't have to because it already say, um, state that they have no pressure. All right, so we did an RC test, a manual test, another RC test, and they all state that we have low compression in two cylinders and no compression in the last two. Right, um, if you can recall, I was getting spark, but it sounded like it's late. One minute it was there and next minute it wasn't. Right, well, this picture basically packs me up. The blue peaks are cylinder one and two. And basically, we have no peaks on cylinder three and four. Fire all there's one, three, four, two. The red line is my sink on number one. And this chart basically tells, you know, explain it, right? So what you got to do is just pause it, you know, and try to understand exactly what I'm seeing here. Right now, I'm sink on number one. I um, expected my power stroke, which is a downstroke on sink on number one. That's that red box, right? And I was supposed to see, like, basically a peak. The two other peaks in the middle, which will be cylinder three and four, right? And this is they are not there, right? So I'm gonna just go a little bit uh, further and do an in cylinder and figure out exactly where the the compression is going. Okay, guys, I got my tools hooked up. Right? I still have the fuel disabled. I have the pulse sensor in the intake. I got one in the exhaust. Right? I got my pressure trying to do so in um, cylinder number four, right? So let me just crank this over and get some tap here. I'm getting spark still. Right, sometimes it's coming and going, right? I believe timing also is um, been compromised in these people. And let's see if we can you know, narrow down exactly what is going on with this engine, right? As I said, we gotta really, you know, bust this down, right? So this is basically gibberish to some. <laughs> but um, let's see if we can make sense of this thing, right? So the red waveform is my in cylinder, my green is my intake pull. My yellow is my um, exhaust and my blue is my relative compression, right? So you're going to use this chart again to determine exactly where the compression is leaking off to, right? Um, I'm seeing right now that my, what you call it, my intake pull is basically pulling down a little bit more than norm. And this let me know that I have an issue where my intake pulses are, um, you know, greater than it's supposed to be right it's supposed to be like a uniform waveform and right now it's letting me know that my it looked like my compression for my um basically companion cylinders is leaking off into the the next cylinder and that's what this telling me right now right off a of first glance right um you're gonna get you know you will have the eye for this after a while of doing this you know enough times but it looks like whatever compression is leaking off Right, well, the valve is open at that time. The compression is leaking off into that cylinder. So let's take this apart and, you know, just for curiosity's sake, I already got to um, discuss this with the client and let them know we got to take this engine apart. And I'm going to take the cover off and see exactly what's going on, right? So we got 668,000 kilometers on the dash, right? And I'm seeing some sludge on it. It looks like a little vanish. It doesn't look like anything major, right? But I believe. You know, lack of oil change is the, um, you know, the culprit in this case, right? But look what we have here, right? This um, this chain is slack, big. So basically, timing jumped, right? So if timing jumped and the chain is slack and it's not holding that um, tension, right? Most likely, the, the tension will probably fail, or even this um camshaft VVT gear. I'm not sure, right? But it's supposed to be down as sprocket, so I'm gonna go into the bore scope, and there it is, right? So basically, the valve took that hit, 
you know, you see the imprints on the pistons, right? So the intake valve took some hits and most likely it probably bent the valve or something like that, right? So this engine got to definitely got to be torn apart. I'm not sure exactly what is needed um, currently to rebuild this engine, but it doesn't look too good at all, right? So we got to definitely take this whole engine apart due to valves coming in contact with the piston. Three days later. All right, so let's speed through all this. I got the okay to pull this engine out and uh, and break it down, right? Um, so that's the engine coming out, right? So the customer said, do what you got to do, diagnose the vehicle, and give me update, right? And, I mean, look at right there. The tensioner basically failed, right? It's sticking, right? And that caused the timing chain to slip and basically, you know, caused timing to jump and valve, you know, came in contact. And that was it, right? Um, so I want to discuss with the client and figure out if they want me to go ahead and uh, rebuild this engine or if they would like to basically I'll probably get a new engine slap it in less long time you know what we do until next time take it easy peace for an engine that doesn't have this much mileage I mean the sludge in here is really look like someone was in here before like they try to clean up stuff but you see this um basically the rockers and stuff like that have a lot of sludge the hydraulic lifters this is definitely st stuck because, you know, look at the valves. This is number three and number four. This is the camshaft is off and you've seen that they, they remain open when the rest is closed, right? Number one and number two is closed and number three and number four is open. So that's why we gain no compression because basically these valves are bent, right? Um, yeah, it doesn't look good at all, right? Even the piston wasn't looking good, right? These rings are stuck. You see, I'm trying to shake it off, and the piss, the rings are stuck. So, yeah, what are you gonna do? Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, share, comment. You know, till next time.